U.S. Open. Every year, thousands of people from around the world descend upon the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Grounds. That gave me chills. We're going to be talking a lot about the tournament over the coming days and all the fun that comes with it. But how much do you really know about the area that holds it all? We're talking about Flushing Meadows Corona Park. I bet you know Anyways, a lot. I know enough to get in trouble because they are that is also the home of one city field exactly joining us live this morning with the history of the park is none other than john free the content creator oh. behind here is new york i'm back i'm back if Thank you me. don't have Thank cookies you. i mean i didn't bring cookies he i had to make up for better. last time okay. you know, alex didn't like whatever for I those of you <laughs> who are for those of you who are new to this segment John Freya, uh, content creator, journalist extraordinaire. He tells us all the things we wish we knew about New York, but more importantly, he always brings snacks. He's a yes. the snack king. He baked yes. the Neiman Marcus chocolate chip cookies with the espresso. So the bar was up it here. It was high. It was very Last high. Last time you brought popcorn, she Yipic, liked it. The, the bar went from up here to down there for <laughs> yeah. me. I, I still love you, but the popcorn was so not. I think it. I'm raising it this time. Okay. So. U.S. Open, U.S. Open theme treats. So we have donuts from Doe. It oh. is like they're usually <gasps> uh, glazed donuts, but a little tennis theme. So it looks like a tennis ball Adorable. with a racket. Let's see. Um, oh, how cute. Oh, I chant the cupcake. Then these are the cupcakes for Setipani. That is a bakery in Brooklyn, and they have a restaurant in Harlem. Seven breads. Now they're known. Yes, seven breads. They are known for their over-the-top panettone, mm -hmm. um, but they made these cupcakes that are an ode to the U.S. Open. I we love, love Setipani because they have the amazing story about oh, the family yes, bended a piece right, on them. They're right. incredible. Yes. We love them. So right. thank you. But let's get thank down you. to the business of the business, the history of the Open yes. itself. How did it get to Flushing Meadows? We hear you're going to tell us about how it got there. Yes. Yeah. So you guys ever wonder about that? Yes. Well, all the I time. actually Burning have. question. It kind of goes back to the U.S. Uh, to the World's Fair that happened in 1964. Right. Now, before this, the U.S. Open was at Forest Hills. They outgrew mm -hmm. the space really quick. And then by the 1970s, they needed to find a new spot. The president of the USTA at the time was flying into LaGuardia, looked out his window, and saw a stadium that, thought would, that he thought would be perfect. Mm. And it was the Singer Bowl. And that was actually for the 64 World's Fair. It was the built by the Singer right. Sewing Singer Company. Bowl. They okay. did some renovations and they renamed it the Louis Armstrong Stadium. Yes. And all the matches were happening there up until 1997 when the Arthur Ashe Stadium was yep. built. I remember that. And then they knocked down the Louis Armstrong st uh, Stadium in 2016, rebuilt it, and when they knocked it down, it was taking away the last pieces of the Singer Bowl. Look at this. Mm. Yeah. Look at this. I but love all of this. Time. But that, wait, there's more. There is. And this that's not the only part of the World's Fair that is left in oh, um, the park. Oh, that's right. So before, if you're going to the game, to the games, get there early, walk around, mm -hmm. and you might find yourself on the Avenue of the Americas. Yes. Yep. Which is confusing because there you is, might be like, wait, that's not Manhattan anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Avenue. No. Right. But there is a path called Avenue of the Americas, and that was named in honor of the '64 World's Fair, uh, which followed the theme of peace through understanding. But the path that you actually oh. walk around that was um, goes back to the 1939 World's Fair, and that was all designed by Gilmore Clark, mm -hmm. and it was done as an um, to look like the pathways at St. Peter's Basilica oh in gosh. Vatican, yes. And all the paths lead to the Trilon or the, or the Perisphere, which is now the Unisphere. Excuse yes. us. It's actually really interesting. I had no clue that that was there until I was walking. Looked I looked down, I'm like, I'm so weird. glad we're friends That's with really him. Really, really. I, I really am. am. very smart. Uh, so this is interesting, this time. Apparently there are time capsules Yes. In the park? Only so, this one would find a time capsule. <laughs> hop on one of the paths, walk around, you'll come across the New York Pavilion, which is like that big thing that you see on the alley yes. in the Grand Central. Well, behind that, there is a time capsule from the Westinghouse Pavilion. And there's two time capsules buried 50 feet below the ground. Oh. One of them is from the 1939 World's Fair, no filled way. with everyday objects, including a Life magazine, Sears Roback catalog, cap. a bottle cap, <laughs> nylons. <laughs> I have no everything, idea. Everything, everything. There's like a whole outfit there from the last <laughs> days. Um, but then there's also another one from the 1964 World's Fair, which has scientific developments. Are uh, they going to open this thing up? I was just going to say, who, how do we know what's in it? Did I somebody mean, open it? Bad news, we'll be dead by the time they open it. If you want to see it, you got to hop into a DeLorean scheduled? and go oh, 5,000 no, years into the future. Fox, where are you? Where you got to go to the year 6939. Which, oh, my. well, that's we'll be dead our married. children's children's what children's. What about the Queen's Museum? There is also the Queen's Museum. That's the last building left from the 1939 World's Fair. Yes. No and that was actually used as the UN's temporary home from, the 19, from 1946 to 1950. That's where oh. UNICEF was created, where the Palestine partition was signed, creating what? the nation of Israel. 
Um, and then also inside today, there's a huge panorama of New York City, which is um, from the 1964 World's Fair. This, this World's is Fair, man. It's on brand because Queens is the most diverse borough. It, yep, in it's the called whole the World's of, Borough. That's right. Uh, Real quick, so if we want, if folks want to take a stroll there, is there an en a specific entrance? Like, what part of what we're like? So, what I would do is if you're taking the train yeah. to uh, Flushing, mm -hmm. basically you get onto, the, get off the platform, you make a right, and you just walk into the park and walk and towards the walking. walk towards the Unisphere, and you'll find all these things. I'm gonna have to do this on Wednesday after the open. Well, and then maybe you can come visit me at City Field for once in your life. Oh, Jeez. you got to go. Even he's been to Even the It's a good view of the field. Yeah, stay Thanks. tuned to his TikTok, by the way, here in New York on TikTok, at here in NYC or on the gram, at here underscore in.